All right, so um, I have a lot of requests to see my animals and talk about what I do. And I had a lot of people from school that always said that they wanted to come over and see all the habitats and the setups and everything. And uh, so I'm just gonna do it, but. I run a reptile rescue. I get a lot of my animals from uh, the zoo. Uh, the guy that works there, he no longer does it. So every animal that comes through him goes to me and they say that they get about 200 to 300 animals every year. Um, so therefore I do have a lot of animals. A majority of them are Matt's, uh, Matt Williamson. And he's here filming and he helps me with the rescues and stuff. And, uh, to take animals from bad situations and re rehabilitate them, or sometimes even from good situations, but people just can't take care of them anymore. So this is just one of the examples. This green iguana here, his name is Daniel. And as you can see, he's about a good three feet long. Um, but he came from a home that rehabilitated him after somebody took a meat cleaver and chopped off this part of his tail from this part down it's all regrown tail because somebody took a meat cleaver and chopped it in half because they were scared of its tail because these tails have been known to uh, gash out people's fingers to where they actually hang off or break off. Same with their uh, mouths. So people get scared of these guys really easily so they do this kind of stuff to them and that's just one of the examples that I do. So uh, yeah but I'll explain everything else on the way and um, we'll get started with the animals. So, this is where we're on the top of the iguanas. We'll do Matt's iguana. Put this guy back. He's in a six foot long screen cage habitat. Um, and sorry about the poor quality. Everything keeps on going wrong with my camera and I just I just got tired of it, so we're using Matt's phone now. So until I get like a camcorder or something or buy one, it'll be like this for a while. This is his really wily, aggressive iguana. Name is Reptar. Matt posted a picture of him on uh, Facebook. Where this will be going. See, as you can see, he's very aggressive. Okay, stop rocking because I can't get you. He's a little bit of a, he's a baby, so he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just scared and out of his mind, I guess you could say. And he whips. Um, so, as you can see, that's him whipping pretty much. Doesn't exactly hurt, but when he gets when he gets bigger, if he's still aggressive, it will hurt. It'll hurt pretty bad. This is Reptar and his 55-gallon uh, custom setup that Matt had picked out for him because this is Matt's like main pet pretty much. It's his baby so he just got a full setup for him and uh, just went to my storage room and just mobbed a whole bunch of stuff on it. And that's him. So those are the two iguanas in my house. Next we will move on to my three snakes over here on my computer desk. This is a lavender face corn snake. He is going to be adopted out sometime this week just because, you know, I'm not trying to keep all these animals so I can collect or anything like that, but it's really, I think we have about 30 animals down here and it's getting to that point where I want to make some more room for more rescues. So here's a lavender face corn snake. Her name is Violet. Really pretty. I got her with Daniel the iguana also, along with the next two snakes that I will be showing you right now. And that's her little setup. She's a small snake, so she doesn't need exactly a huge setup like my other snakes. Here's a normal ball python. It came with this girl and Daniel, so uh, I got pretty much, it was a collection call, and the guy had to go have more time for work or something like that but her name is ET uh, because when I told him that these little round things on her body 
are called alien heads. They named them ET, so that's ET. ET is a mess. Supposedly she doesn't like her cage head up or something, but that's ET. Nose irritation and scabbing on his mouth. Uh, that's not really exactly an illness, it's just because he's been rubbing up against something or on something. And uh, I can guarantee the scabs will come off in his next shed and it'll be treated with Batril and everything. And my lights are going on crazy right now. Um, this is her, she's like paper white uh, and she has pink bands on her. And uh, the nose irritation is just some scabbing over her nostril so her mouth opens up so that she can breathe. And I'm going to work on getting that scabbing off before she sheds. And that's her setup. As of right now, uh, you know, I just cleaned the tank so there's not exactly any water in the water bowls. So that's uh, number five. Um, we're going to do Matt's ball pythons right now and then we'll go into boas. This is this girl princess. shortly got after his uncle killed the first snake he had. Just a normal, really pretty normal. Uh, so, really nice, really tame. And, yep. He has all the snakes over here right now. So, he just respawned in. said she was a Mojave, but compared to Princess, she's pretty much exactly the same. Um, really cool, big eater. So, I don't know exactly how much the camera picks up any of their colors, but they're really pretty. And yes, I am willing to let people come over and see the collection, it's just I don't know. I gotta actually know you, know you for a good amount of time before I actually let you come over to my house. This is another rescue ball python who is aggressive, so I throw some aspen bedding over her head so that I can actually pick him up. Um, we don't know what it is. We're still going off of normal because we don't know what it is, but the contrast of that is really crazy. And uh, came with the California king snake, who is very, very thin. This one actually is pretty thin. Um, came with the California king snake, that was just his spine, ribs, and his scales. And he starved him to death. And so, yeah, that's who we got this one with. But Luckily, this one was still good enough to rehabilitate, so we're working on him right now. I gave him to Matt because he has a lot more ball pythons than I do. I think that's like, whoa, well, here's a treat. This is Matt's spider, who is curled up in her water bowl. Her, him, I don't know. Her. Uh, and it's a spider ball and really beautiful and she was curled up in her water bowl so I'll put her back in there but that's her another one of Matt's little girls alright now for 
Mets huge female, which is also in her water bowl. I'll end up putting her back. She's a huge, huge female. Uh, she locked up with my pinstripe breeder uh, a couple of times, but no eggs, no really results or anything yet, so we're not exactly counting on anything, but I can't even fit my fingers uh, around her body, and that's not even the full girth of her body. Her full girth is right there. So that's Matt's big girl. Let her get back to soaking. Okay, uh, boa constrictors, Matt's girl who I rescued, then bit me on the shoulder and constricted my neck and I passed out on my bed. So I didn't want to have that around me when I had other animals that I needed to take care of and I couldn't really tame this girl um, with no time. I will take her out, but... She's not going to be out for very long because after a while she gets very aggressive and really kind of tempty. So this is her. Her name is Medusa because she's a bitch. Um, so she's about five foot, probably about ready to strike. So if you give me, see me get bit, then good show. But she messes up her cage pretty often. and really really wet in there so we don't really have to worry about spraying her and I spray all the animals well all of my animals about every night but because of all the humidity that's going on right now Matt doesn't worry about spraying his things I do just to be safe this one supposed to be mean um, supposed to be so aggressive and supposed to be so mean, but honestly, I really do think she's a sweetheart, except for the fact that she actually is really active. And you'll see that in about five seconds. She'll start moving around, and uh, she's never struck or bit any of us, but her previous owner did. I got this with uh, Daniel the Green Iguana and those three other snakes that you saw in the beginning the snow corn, the lavender corn, and the ball python. And there's another boa that came with all these, but really pretty colors. She'll be up for adoption in about a month or two. So uh, I'll let you guys know about her. And uh, yeah, uh, if I can get it back here today. Um, this is about the fifth or sixth time that we've remade this video. Just exactly how it's been going along. These moms on babies, breeder, breeder, breeder. Nothing in that tank yet. I just gotta get some more males. And here's some rats. Just, um, I, I mean, like with the amount of big snakes that we have, it was just time that we start rats because it'd be 40, 50 bucks just for the rat bill. And that's a week. So I think we got five boas overall and uh, about six or seven animals that eat uh, rats. So we just figured it's, it's about high time that we start breeding. So that's her, that's one of the female breeders and actually gotta get her some food and get all the food, but that's them. Uh, on to the babies. Uh, I hatched out some baby corn snakes out of these eggs. Not all the eggs are there. Uh, this one was just pipping a couple minutes ago right here. And uh, she's about ready to come out. We just gotta wait and see. She'll be out sometime tonight probably. Cut the eggs after 65? 64 days. 64 days. Which is very long time for them to be in those eggs. And we're still them. sitting at day 71 right now. Yep, and these guys who are feisty. They're feisty because they're babies and they're cute. Uh, where are you? These guys, little babies. See that? They bite. They bite a lot. Just 
just because they're babies. They don't know what they're doing. So, little babies, we don't know what they are. Honestly, don't. We came out of a couple of different snakes that are just really different morphs and morphs that I haven't seen being bred or anything, but they're... Defused albino and creamsicle. Yeah, but they're feisty little guys because, yep, see, that actually scared me. <laughs> um, but there's one baby. There's actually four of them right now. There's the little guy. Next is another baby. Who is right there? Another little girl. Or, I don't, well, I don't know, but I just call them a girl because it's just because they think they're, you know, high rollers or something, fighting everybody, but they're cute. They are actually really cute. So, put her back. Another one. Uh, just, they're all pretty much the same. Just another little one right there. This one more looks like a darker motley color and everything, so. The next one Matt says is really, really aggressive. It I was when I took him out. I haven't really gotten the chance to hold him or anything yet, but it's like he's an aspen. And we ran out of newspaper, or not newspaper, paper towel. Yeah. There he is. Here's another little baby. Looks a little bit feisty, this motley pattern. Oh, well, not really motley, because no, none of the parents were motley. Um, but, really pretty. It's just a normal, normal. Yep. That's the last baby. I'll wait for the rest of them to pop out, or which of them pop out. And while we're in this room, I would like to just do the guinea pigs. These are not food, these are actual pets. This black one here is Ragamuffin. And he's really cute. Really nice little guy. Really fat. And uh, he's my little baby. I just don't have the time to hold them as much as I used to. So, back the first time when I got ragamuffin, I only had two or three snakes. And now, I have 20 or 30. This is Miss Piggy. When we got her, Matt and I took about 30 minutes. This little hole right here. Somebody took a staple from a staple gun and pushed it through there and pried it like together pretty much and her hair was all wiry and her little feet were corkscrewed about three times one two three and uh so we had to cut that give her a bath and then take care of the ear piercing which took a while and a lot of care uh, she cries and runs a lot because the people that i got her from just never held her so um now that I have the smell of rodent on me, I wouldn't doubt it if I got bit. So, let's move to my room. Let's do bearded dragons. Where is it? Oh. This is the Oblo. Um. Oh, you got it. Yeah. This is Diablo. He's a citrus uh, boy that I rescued. Kind of thin right now. Well, actually, he's not really thin at all. He had, he just ate two pinky mice um, yesterday. And he's really sweet. Um, I'm debating on whether to get him a good home, but I found somebody at the church that I know would really take care of him and really like him. And so that's him. He has a jet black beard right now. 
a little bit of a yellow tint up top. So that's him, that's Diablo. Here's Matt's big boy. His name is Bowser. He's a sandfire citrus male and really pretty. Yeah, he ate a pinky yesterday and a whole bunch of veggies and we give him about two dozen crickets a week because they're big. They're huge. They're nice little guys. So, and yes, their tanks do need to be clean, but also you can clean them like this and in about three or four days it'll be just as dirty, so we don't bother to do it as much as it should be. On to draining this. I know it's kind of weird, this entire top thing right here, but when Matt and I were carrying it out, the opening top fell off and broke. And this girl right here, the first girl that you probably see, um, was sitting in the back corner behind the actual tank. And I figured that if I go to bed and she's out, and just because she's a five foot bow doesn't mean it's okay for her to be out whenever she wants to. Oh. Um, so, this is, we don't even know her name or what the name is on her. But this is a uh, salmon morph boa constrictor, red tail. Um, don't know what her name is. If you guys think of a good name for her, then comment in the comment box or message me or something. But she'll be up for adoption uh, in about a month, month or two. This one also came with uh, the green iguana, the three beginning snakes and the so-called aggressive one the, uh, in the big wooden tank out there so and if it was just this girl right here the other girl that's sitting in this tank uh, this was Athena's uh, I mean this was Matt's girl um, until I traded her for the very aggressive one that put a scar on my shoulder He's just a normal red tail, uh, Colombian red tail, and really pretty, really long, nice fat. She was a mom. We got her from a breeder, and uh, so if it was just her in the tank, I wouldn't really worry about it because she eats like five mice every week or five, six mice every week, and she, you know, even when the top is up. She never moves. She probably just roam around her tank and get some water and then go back to sleep. She's just a lazy snake like that. So, that's her. Um, here's Matt's male uh, corn snake and albino diffuse. Diffused albino. Diffused albino. And Bites. He's like cage aggressive versus head. He's cage aggressive, but if you pick him up quick and once you finally get him in your hands, he's usually pretty good. He's the father of the clutch of eggs that we have now. Yep, the mother was traded for that um bearded dragon. The second bearded dragon, the sandfire citrus. Um so he's a really pretty, pretty snake. Um, depending on what Matt's doing with it, you're gonna have to message him, so any of Matt's snakes, if you have any questions about them, message him because I'm not exactly an expert on Matt's snakes. So, that's the last of Matt's snakes. And I'm retarded. All these animals do have heating pads all hooked up to this right here and yeah but uh this is the first thing i ever had his name her name is curly and she's a 
they call her a fancy corn, but what she really is is a uh, aneurysmic black and white corn snake. She had nose irritation also, um, and her mouth scabbed over so bad that she that I actually had to pick the scabs out of her mouth so that she can actually breathe and didn't eat for about six months and still doing really good and yes she does get water I just don't have water things in there because I just cleaned all these tanks yesterday actually not all of them but it did take me about like three hours almost maybe more to clean out like seven or eight tanks um, here's a Kenyan Sambo, which we drove all the way out to Camp Verde for, and if he bites me, which I can guarantee he probably will, um, uh, uh, Kenyan Sambo, um, we drove all the way out to Camp Verde for him, so, I think he's just pretty good, he's pretty good once you get him out of the cage, but, He's an asshole once you get in the cage. He gets irritated very fast. So, that's, uh, he's going to a pet store soon. But that's him. And I do have the small rodents on me, so. These snakes are pretty interested in my hands. Here is a prairie king snake male who is not eating right now because it is summer and. They usually stock up on food in the fall. You need about two full-size rodents every week. He's pretty cage defensive also. And he pees and poops and jizzes everywhere. So, I'm not going to handle him too much, but that's him. Just came out of shed, so... Uh, about three, three and a half, four. Something like that. Four foot, something like that, so... That's him putting back before he kisses and pisses all over me, so. Uh, that's him. Can you hand me the tank top? We're down to the last two, which I forgot to show you my gentle giant, which is Rose, but she's in the tank under that beardy. Um, under the beardy. And this boy is really sick. He has a respiratory problem. And I'm going to be talking to my grandma tonight. I need Beatrel for her or him, like, quick. As you can see, that little bubble, that's not rabies. He has respiratory. And, um, I mean, he needs Beatrel after Beatrel. He'll be fine. I soak him some, uh, a lot. So, hopefully he's drinking his water more often. And, uh, that's him. Kind of thin because he's not, not eating right now because of the respiratory. So I need to get that bait fast. He actually hasn't eaten in a while because of breeding and everything else that he's been doing. And my eight foot Colombian red tail and as you can see she's huge um she has ribs that are inside of her that are broken and sideways inside of her body and uh she's really sad also the worst part is she had lung surgery um and she has a scar on her body and when she breathes in, this happens. 
Hold on, let me see if she'll do it. Am I on the right part of the body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. When she breathes in, this happens. I'm trying to get her to do it, but she's not going to. Well, let's wait for her to breathe, but I'll explain it. Uh, when she breathes in, that body concaves inside of her. Just like that, actually. Except for it gets it's, about it's, three times worse than that. Yeah, it all goes in there. Like, everything. And, uh... It's really sad. Um, she had lung surgery, and snakes only breathe through one lung. Which still confuses me of why they did it. I try calling the people back, and they don't answer. They don't want to respond because they obviously know that they put this boat through hell. But um, when I brought her back, that wooden tank that she's in is about four foot long and filled with um, wood chips that they got from their backyard. Uh, I was surprised that she didn't have mites. And um, when I cleaned out her tank, uh, there she goes. Maybe she'll get that other side in there. Um, uh, when I cleaned out her tank, the uh, there were spiders and roaches and beetles and ants and stuff everywhere in it and it took me about 45 minutes to sanitize everything and uh, clean everything and so pretty much this is uh, what what I do and Matt helps me a lot with them and I'm really grateful for that and um, pretty much everything that I do is revolved around these animals and I spend about like five to six hours a week just cleaning and uh, misting and that doesn't even count feeding and holding and spot cleaning and all that other good stuff that you have to do when you have the size of collection of animals and Matt takes care of his I'm not uh, I don't do his but um, this is why we do what we do is because to take them out of these kind of situations I mean it's just rewarding to us to make sure that these animals um, you know, they don't get treated bad anymore, and especially like Daniel or Rose here, um, that California king snake or that ball python. Um, I mean, just the kind of condition that they come in and the way that people treat these animals. They're just really underappreciated and everything, so uh, that's just about it. So, um, this will be uploaded on Facebook and YouTube. This is my first video ever, and I'm sorry for the quality, but like I said, this is about the f maybe fifth time that we have recorded this same exact video. And I keep on posting on Facebook, well, I'm going to get it done tonight, well, I'm going to do it tonight, I'm going to have everything done tonight. But, as you can see, it just didn't work out. Either the camera was dead, the file was too big, the video was too long, or something like that, and it just got out of hand. So. We just said screw it, we're going to use Matt's phone and I'm going to probably take out some money to buy a camcorder or something nice so I can make good videos and everything. But any information or comments can be left below whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. And uh, any adoption, any adoption questions, um, like I said I have some reptiles for adoption right now so. Um, yeah, just comment or message me or something like that and let me know if that's pretty much the end of the video. I'll make more updates on uh, new animals and uh, informational videos on different types of animal species and stuff like that along down the road. And I'm not going to guarantee when they're going to be on, but I'm going to try. So thanks for watching.